Luna, how do you know where I was? Experts. Your head's full of them. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Harry Potter actors who were cast straight out of the books. Keep in mind, we're not ranking on performance alone. We're looking at the series stars who best resemble their characters on the page, with physical appearance and characterization both taken into account. I've always wanted to use that spell. Number 10. Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? You never quite know how it's going to pan out when you cast for child roles, especially when they're the lead. But safe to say, it's hard to imagine anyone else playing Harry Potter these days. Really? Hey, she's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry. Um... Kidding. Radcliffe brought the character's quick wit and unwavering determination to life right from the start, as he grew with the franchise, learning from some of the best Britain has to offer. The weight of the world his character carried began to translate to the screen. It's a shame we never got to see as much of the book Harry's sharp tongue in the movies, but when given the opportunity, Radcliffe can do sass with the best of them. Harry! Sir, it's nearly nightfall. Surely you realise I can't allow you to go roaming the ground by yourself? Well then, by all means, come along, sir. Number 9. Ray Fiennes as Voldemort It was foolish of you to come here tonight, Tom. The orders are on their way. By which time I shall be gone. And you... shall be dead. Few can argue against Voldemort's rebirth in Goblet of Fire being a visual triumph, pale white with a skull-like face and slitted nostrils. The Dark Lord is born again exactly as described on the page. Astonishing what a few drops of your blood will do. <laughs> Pick up your one, Potter! Aside from the red eyes, which were supposed to have cat-like pupils, everything is pretty spot on. Add actor Ray Fiennes to the mix, and you have the ice-cold delivery to match. He absolutely threw himself into this iconic role, trading wailed outbursts and whispered threats that always keep us on our toes. Don't you turn your back on me, Harry Potter! I want you to look at me when I kill you! I want to see the light leave your eyes! Number 8. James and Oliver Phelps as Fred and George Weasley. As George, if you will. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Though Julie Walters adds weight and warmth to Molly, we're giving the title of Best Adapted Weasleys to the twins. Fred, you next. He's not Fred, I am. Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. Oh, I'm sorry, George. I'm only joking. I am Fred. Fred and George are always together in the books. It's even difficult for their mother to know which is which sometimes. Likewise, James and Oliver Phelps are pretty impossible to tell apart. Or at least they were during the time of filming. So you mean this map shows... Everyone. Everyone? Everyone. Where they are, what they're doing, every minute of every day. Brilliant! Their shared lines of dialogue allow them to play off each other in a way that was almost telepathic. The pair have less to do in the movies, mostly because Percy isn't around to tease, but the actors certainly held their own with all the wit and charm of the book twins. Number 7. Tom Felton as Draco Malfoy You'll soon find out that some wizarding families are better than others, Potter. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. Tom Felton has surprisingly little screen time across all eight movies, but the young actor showed incredible maturity to play all sides of a changing character, completing Draco's turnaround in just over 30 minutes. Draco, you are no assassin. How do you know what I am? I've done things that would shock you. Jason Isaacs is worth a mention here for his delightfully cruel take on Lucius, creating some sympathy for Malfoy Jr. in the process, but Felton did the rest with a fantastic turn in Half-Blood Prince. In a single performance, Felton turned a cocky and arrogant boy into a nervous and tortured young man, fulfilling all the promise of one of the book's most important arcs. Please let me help you. I don't want your help. Don't you understand? I have to do this. I have to kill you. He's gonna kill me. Number 6. Helena Bonham Carter as Bellatrix Lestrange.
The role of Bellatrix Lestrange originally went to Helen McCrory, who eventually landed the role of the character's sister, Narcissa. The studio went the opposite way in recasting. Who knows how to play? Itty, bitty, baby. Potter. Best known for playing some of the wackiest roles Tim Burton could think up, Helena Bonham Carter stuck with what she knew and turned Bellatrix up to 11. Put the boys in the cellar! I want a little conversation with this one! Go to go! As the series' most unhinged character, Carter feels right at home, outshining Death Eaters already established and even improvising some of her craziest lines. Bonus points for being versatile enough to expertly portray Hermione as Bellatrix too. Madame Lestrange. I don't like to be kept waiting. Number five, Ivana Lynch as Luna Lovegood. What an interesting necklace. It's a charm, actually. Keeps away the narvals. Already a fan of the books, Ivana Lynch identified with the quirky, non-judgmental Luna Lovegood right from her debut. Before even being cast, she had become pen pals with J.K. Rowling after first writing to her publisher. The author offered advice and even the details of the casting agent, but Lynch landed her dream role on merit, beating out over 15,000 other girls to win the part. You're not going mad. I can see them too. You're just as sane as I am. In the words of producer David Heyman, the others could play Luna. Ivana Lynch is Luna. Rowling even began writing book Luna with Lynch in mind. Talk about perfect fit. The things we lose have a way of coming back to us in the end. If not always in the way we expect. Number four. Maggie Smith as Minerva McGonagall. That was bloody brilliant! Well, thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. Perhaps it would be more useful if I were to transfigure Mr. Potter and yourself into a pocket watch. That way one of you might be on time. A universally beloved character, so much of Professor McGonagall's appeal is in the respect she shares with the title hero. Their bond is made obvious a few different times in the novels, like when it took McGonagall being severely disrespected for Harry to perfect the Cruciatus Curse. Do what you have to do. I'll secure the castle. Potter. It's good to see you. Maggie Smith, who already has status as a British national treasure, commanded authority from her very first appearance. The unspoken relationship she has with her students and her fine sense of justice is probably most evident in Order of the Phoenix, where she actively opposes Professor Umbridge to become an instant fan favourite. So silly of me, but it sounds as if you're questioning my authority in my own classroom. Minerva. Not at all, Dolores. Merely your medieval methods. Number three, Amelda Staunton as Dolores Umbridge. As this is an issue of ministry security, you leave me with no alternative. The Cruciatus curse ought to loosen your tongue. That's illegal. What Cornelius doesn't know won't hurt him. Speak of the devil. Dolores Umbridge is a living reminder that not all cold-blooded villains in the Wizarding World are Death Eaters. She's certainly prejudiced enough to be one, after all. Spectacularly evil and described as toad-like in appearance, it would have been easy to present the latest Defense Against the Dark Arts professor as cartoonish in the movies. Luckily, they found just the right actress. Let us preserve what must be preserved, perfect what can be perfected, and prune practices that ought to be prohibited. <laughs> Amelda Staunton brought all the worst parts of Umbridge to life in a way that's sickeningly believable, right down to the high-pitched giggle that never fails to make us shudder. Staunton's portrayal of a power trip gone wrong briefly makes Umbridge the most hated character in the series. It's extra impressive as she debuts right after Voldemort's return. That's right. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Don't you, Mr. Potter? Number two, Robbie Coltrane as Rubius Hagrid. <laughs> so, 
Sorry about that. The importance of Robbie Coltrane's performance cannot be understated. He was the first and preferred actor Rowling had in mind for the role of Hagrid. From his first appearance on the page, Hagrid starts as physically intimidating, lands on clumsy and comical, and soon after becomes the story's emotional heartbeat. There's no Hogwarts without you, Hagrid. Playing a character out of place in the familiar muggle world, but a reliable guide into the wizarding world, Coltrane had big boots to fill, pun very much intended. The late actor ticked every box, from his tangled beard, thick West Country accent, to our desire for him to wrap us in a big hug. What am I doing my first day? Brilliant, Professor. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Emma Thompson as Sybil Trelawney. Thompson adds layers of sincerity to an old fraud. The truth lies buried like a sentence deep within a book, waiting to be read. But first, you must broaden your minds. First, you must look beyond. Timothy Spall as Peter Pettigrew. A fittingly creepy performance right down to the fur-like hair. Hey, James wouldn't have wanted me killed. Kenneth Branagh as Gilderoy Lockhart. We would love to have seen an Order of the Phoenix reappearance. Order of Merlin, third class. Honorary member of the Dark Force Defense League and five times winner of which weekly's most charming smile award. But I don't talk about that. Richard Harris as Albus Dumbledore. A calmer, more book accurate Dumbledore. That is one of my more brilliant ideas. And between you and me, that is saying something. Gary Oldman as Sirius Black. No one else could have embodied that charm and daredevil attitude. What's life without a little risk? I don't want to see you get shot back in Azkaban. Oh, no, don't worry about me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Alan Rickman as Severus Snape Understandable. Over the years, I've played my part well, so well, I've deceived one of the greatest wizards of all time. Severus Snape may be younger in the books, but we don't dock points for aging up if Alan Rickman is involved. Not many actors can pull off such a complex character, but Rickman had us guessing in every one of his slow-talking scenes. I can teach you how to bewitch the mind and ensnare the senses. I can tell you how to bottle fame, brew glory, and even put a stopper in death. The die-hard baddie looked right at home in all black, but where he best captured the potions master was in his performance. It's well known that Rickman knew the character's backstory all along, and he played to the inner conflict we just don't see on the page. Whether Snape is truly redeemed is up for debate, but the best adapted Harry Potter character? Always. No one. Can, uh, I should never reveal the best of you, sir. Your word. Who did we miss? And which Harry Potter actors are least like their book characters? Watch Mojo asked calmly. Harry, did you put your name in the cupboard of the fire? No, sir. You asked one of the older students to do it for you? No, sir. You're absolutely sure? Yes, yes sir. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.